good morning students welcome to today's class today i am going to teach you the first lesson of ninth standard english the enchanted food so this is a short story taken from the great epic mahabharata i think you have all heard about the great epic mahabharata from your elders or from your father mother or grandfather so the enchanted food enchanted means just like we say that mata mantra like that fool means kola so here the lesson was is be as been extracted from the great epic mahabharata in mahabharata there is pandavas and kauravas both were brothers and in the mahabharata the pandavas lost everything in the game of dice dice means it is a one type of game and there was an agreement between kauravas and pandavas that those who are losing the game they have to go to the exile exile means living in forest for 12 years and one year disguise so after the losing the game of dice pandavas were used to go to the forest for 20 years and one year for disguise so in that period there are they faced so many challenges they have become witnesses for so many events so many problems they faced in that one has been given in this test and this lesson was written by c rajagopala chauri c rajagopala chauri is full name is chakravarti rajagopala chauri he was a well known writer and also a wise politician we can get the information about him in the page number 22 and he was popularly known as raja chauri and he was also a great patriot and wise politician and his popular books are based on ramayana mahabharata upanishads and so on so through this he wanted to he wanted to inculcate the human values in present generations because in present generous generation we are seeing that we are losing the human values so if we go through the great epics just like ramayana mahabharata and upanishad and vedas we can see that there are so many human values if we inculcate that human values our life will be enlightened so that's why we should be proud of our ancestors we should be proud of our great glorious history of this land so that after 
losing the game of dice the panda was went to exile for 12 years and one year disappeared students keep your books open i will go on to read the lesson in the mahabharata the panda was lost everything in the game of dice to the kauravas and had to live in the forest for 12 years so according to the agreement after losing the game of dice pandavas are used to live in the forest for 12 years i already told you dice means it is one type of game during this period they had to constantly move from place to place for safety and to meet their daily needs so here you you have observed that there is a word constantly 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 means always so the pandu was always they have to change their place from one place to another because if anybody identified them they have to again they have to go for exile that was the rule of the agreement so that for the for the daily needs for the daily needs means cloth shelter and food they have to change their place that's why the panda was constantly move from place to place for safety and meet their daily needs one day in the 12th year one day in the 12th year the panda was brothers wandered deep into the forest in pursuit of a deer so one day in the 12th year panda was wander wander means to walk slowly without any purpose wander means to walk slowly without any purpose they wander in the deep forest the datta aranya anta karthi datta vada kaadu anta karthi we so they went deep into the forest in pursuit of a deer the sun was hot over it and the five brothers grew more and more weary and thirsty so it was maybe it was the summer season the sun was hot over it so sun the sunlight was very bright and the five brothers who were the five brothers yes dharma yudhishthira arjuna dharmaraya nakula and sahadeva these are five members called pandavas five brothers grew more and more weary and thirsty so after a long walk they were very tired they were feeling thirsty so after that yudhishthira sat down under a tree to rest and said to nakula so they were tired so the elder one the eldest one who is the eldest one in the pandavas as vidhishthara or dharmaraya he was the eldest in the forest in eldest in the pandavas he sat down please note down this sank sank it is a past form of sink past form of sink so he has sank down sank down means sit under a tree so yudhishthira sat down under a tree to rest and said to nakula so yudhishthira sit under a tree and told to nakula brother climb the tree and see whether there is any pool or river nearby so the eldest of the pandava yudhishthira ordered nakula to climb a tree and see whether there is any water nearby 
Nakula climbed the tree, looked around, and said, At a little distance, I see water plants and cranes. There must certainly be water there. So, you please observe the observe here, students. Nakula, without any word, he just followed the instructions of Yudhishthara without any opposition, without any word. So, this means it shows that the value of we should hear the words of our elders. We should follow the words of our brothers, mother, father and grandfather. We should respect. That is the value we can observe here. So Nakula climbed the tree, looked around and said. Nakula climbed the tree and looked around. Said. At a little distance, very near, I see water plants and cranes. So, after climbing the tree, and Nakula said that he saw water plants. The plants which were growing in water. And the cranes, the cranes means it, uh, one type of white bird with uh, long legs and long neck. There must certainly be water there. So Nakula was hope there was water. Chances of water. Yudhishthira sent him to fetch some water to drink. So now Yudhishthira, the eldest one, ordered Nakula to go and bring the water. Here the word you please observe to pitch. To pitch. To pitch means to bring. To bring. It is a one example for infinitive. Infinitive. Pitch is an action word. To infinitive. It is an example for to infinitive. Nakula was, Nakula was glad when he got to the place and saw that there was a pool. So when Nakula reached that place where he saw the cranes and the water plants, he was very much happy because there was a beautiful pool. He was very thirsty himself. So Nakula himself was very thirsty at that time. So that, so thought of quenching his thirst first. So after reaching that place, Nakula decided to quench his thirst first. Quench means to satisfy. Quench means to satisfy his thirst. Thirst means just like a bayar came. So, Nakula decided to quench his thirst first before taking water in the queer for his brothers. So, before going to take the water to his brothers, Nakula decided to quench his thirst first. Here a word queer. Queer means uh, it is a case of uh, arrows. Means in Kannada it is Battalike. Quench is thrust first. Water in the quail for his brothers. But no sooner did he dip his hand in the transparent water. So when Nakula dipped his hand in the transparent or clear water, he heard a voice which said. He heard a voice. He only heard a voice. He didn't see any anyone there. He can he, he will only heard the voice. Stop, Nakula! Do not drink. This food belongs to me. Oh, son of Madri, answer my questions and then drink the water. So the voice told to Nakula, ordered to Nakula that. Stop Nakula, don't drink. Nakula, you should not drink the water. This pool is belong to me. 
This pool is mine. If you want to drink the water, you have to answer my questions first. This was the order given by the voice to Nakula. Nakula was surprised. Nakula was very much surprised but carried away by his intense thirst. He eats and he does not the warning. Nakula was surprised but he was carried out by a or carried away by his intense thirst. He was very thirsty. He can't bear it. So that he heedless the warning. He neglected the warning. He knelt down and began to drink the water. So, even though the voice gave him the warning, Nakula, heedless that warning, neglecting that, that warning, he started to drink the water. At once he began to feel terribly drowsy and he fell down to all appearance dead. Once he started to drink the water, he fell down and he fell down unconsciously or he fell down dead. When Nakula did not, did not return for a long time, when Nakula was not came back, for a long time, Yudhishthara sent Sahadeva. When Yudhishthara was worried about Nakula and he sent Sahadeva to see what has happened to Nakula. To see what the matter was. Sahadeva also ignored the warning. He drank the water and at once dropped down. So when Sahadeva reached the place, he saw that Nakula was filled dead. But even though he was also very thirsty, so he also neglected, he also he left the warning and he also drank the water and he also fell down, dropped down. When Sahadeva to fail to return, Vidhishthara sent Arjuna to see whether the brother, brothers had met with any danger. So when Nakula was not written, Sahadeva also was not written. So the Vidhishthara was very much worried about his brothers. So, he sent the great hero Arjuna to see what has happened to them. Arjuna went swiftly. Swiftly means fast. Swift means swap, fast. S-W-I-F-T. Swift. Fast. So, Arjuna went very fast to see what has happened to his brothers. He saw his brother slain dead near the pool. So when Arjuna reached that place, he saw that his two brothers, Nakula and Sahadeva, were lying dead. Heart broken with grief. So Arjuna was very much upset. His heart was broken with grief. He wanted to avenge their deaths. He wanted to take avenge for the deaths of his brothers. However, he too was overwhelmed by a monstrous thirst. But he was also very much thirsty. He also wanted to drink the water. So that which coupled him towards the fatal fool. So if that was the a monstrous thirst make him to drink the water. Again the warning voice was heard. Again, once again, Arjuna heard the voice of warning voice. Answer my questions before you drink the water. This fool is mine. If you disobey me, you will follow your brothers. So, Arjuna also heard the voice. The voice warned Arjuna not to drink the water without answer his questions. And it also warned him don't disobey his words. Don't disobey him. Arjuna became very angry. So hearing these words, 
the great hero Arjuna was very angry. He got very angry. He cried, "Who are you? Come and stand up to me, and I will kill you." So Arjuna cried with anger, "Who are you? Yar nino, come and stand up to me, and I will kill you." He shot up, shot arrows in the directions, direction of the voice. So saying like this, Arjuna shot short arrows in the direction of the voice. The invisible being laughed in scorn and said, "So the invisible, there is no body. We can, he can only hear the voice of. There is no picture. The invisible being laughed." So here in the words of Arjuna, the invisible voice laughed in scorn and said, "Your arrows cannot touch me. Your arrows cannot touch me. It will not reach me. It will not kill me." Arjuna wanted to destroy this unseen foe. Arjuna wanted to kill that enemy. Foe means enemy. But first, he had to quench his terrible thirst. So he drank the water and also fell down dead. But before killing that enemy, Arjuna wanted to quench, satisfy his thirst. So he also drank the water and fell down dead. After another anxious wait. So here, the Yudhishthira is losing his patience. Because the his brothers Nakula, Sahadeva, Arjuna, the great hero Arjuna also not returned for a long time. So he was very much worried, and he ordered Bhima to see what has happened to his brothers. Even Arjuna, the great hero, has not returned. Something terrible must have happened to our brothers. So now Yudhishthira is. Thinking that something terrible has been happened to his brothers, something danger has been happened there. Please find them quickly. Bima hurried away without another word. Like Arjuna, Bima also did not hear the warning and drank the water eagerly. So now the great, very. Strengthened person, very strong person, the Bhima, who was the strength of an sixteen thousand elephant, went to search his brothers, and he also came near to that fool, enchanted fool, and he also neglected the words of that voice, and he drank the water. He also fell down. He gave a glaring around him defense. And instantly, his great strength seemed to slip from him like a garment. When, when Bhima drank the water, all his strength was seemed to slip from his body like a garment, and he also fell down, fell dead among his brothers. So he also, just like his brothers, he also fell down. Puzzled and worried that his brothers. Had not returned, Yudhishthira himself proceeded in the direction. So now, Yudhishthira, the eldest of Pandavas, is now proceeded. He started to walk in the direction in which his brothers taken. His brothers had taken. When he came near the pool, so when Yudhishthira came near that pool. He saw his brothers lying on the ground. All four, four, all four brothers, Nakula, Sahadeva, Arjuna, and Bhima, were lying on the ground. To all appearance dead. There was no consciousness in their body, and they were appearing dead. He also shocked. So looking their brothers. Yudhishthira was shocked. 
he got into the pool to quench his thirst so he was also very thirsty so he went near the pool to drink the water at once a voice without form warned him so that voice which was warned the four pandavas also warned yudhishthira your brothers dead because they did not heed my words do not follow them answer my questions first and then quench your thirst this pool is mine so again the invisible voice warned yudhishthira don't follow your brothers your brothers did not heed my words so now they are lying dead if you neglected if you heed as my warning you will follow your brothers so don't follow your brothers you should answer my question and then then drink the water like that the voice warned him yudhishthira knew this knew that these could be none other than the words of eksha and guessed what had happened to his brothers so yudhishthira the eldest one is now understood what had happened to his brothers and he also identify the voice whose it is it is none other than yaksha so yudhishthira he saw a possible way of redeeming the situation redeeming means to uh, sudarish to make the situation better how to make the situation better he saw the possible way of redeeming the situation so he said the bodiless voice please ask your questions so yudhishthira did not make the mistake which his brothers have done so he patiently told that voice to ask the questions and he is ready to give the answers the voice put questions rapidly one after another so the voice now started to put the questions to yudhishthira the first question the voice asked it asked what makes the sun shines every day now the every day the sun is shining what makes it to shine this was the first question asked by the voice the invisible voice to yudhishthira yudhishthira replied the power of god the power of god only make the sun shine bright sun shine every day the second question asked by the voice what rescues man in danger what rescues rescues means kaapadu what rescues man in danger yudhishthira quickly answered courage so when we are in danger if we do not lose our courage we can come out from the danger so that's why yudhishthira replied that courage can only rescue man in danger what is more nobly sustaining than the earth so the third question asked by the invisible voice to yudhishthira was what is more nobly sustaining than the earth so yudhishthira said the mother who brings up the children so the most sustaining than the earth is the mother because she will brings up the children what is the faster than the wind again the invisible voice asked what is the faster than wind yudhishthira replied mind yes definitely children mind is the faster than the wind what be friends a traveler who is the real friend of a traveler yudhishthira replied learning learning is the real friend of a traveler who is the friend of one who stays at home who is the real friend 
of one who stays at home? Yudhishthira replied, the wife. So, the wife is the real friend for one who stays at a, for home. Who accompanies a man in death? Who accompanies man in death? This was the question asked by the invisible voice to Yudhishthira. Yudhishthira replied, Dharma. The, that alone accompanies the soul in its solitary journey after death. So, when we are living on this earth, we are believing that he is mine, he is my friend, he is my brother, he is my sister, he is my father and mother. But when we are dead, when we are dying, nobody will follow us. Only the Dharma only follow us in the solitary journey after death. This was the answer given by Yudhishthira to that voice. Which is the biggest puzzle? Which is the biggest puzzle? The earth which contains all within itself is the greatest puzzle. So, Yudhishthira telling to Yudhishthira answer to the question of the invisible voice. The invisible voice asked that which is the biggest vessel. So the earth, the earth is the biggest vessel because which it contains all within itself. So next the invisible voice asked what is happiness? What is happiness? This was the very difficult question to answer. If we ask a common man, but Yudhishthira replied that gave a wonderful answer that happiness is the result of good conduct. Happiness is the result of good conduct. So those who are having good character, good conduct, they will be always happy. So next question asked by the invisible voice, what is that abandoning which man becomes loved by all? Yudhishthira replied, pride. Pride for abandoning that man will be loved by all. What is the loss which brings joy and not sorrow? So this was a beautiful question. What is the loss which brings joy and not sorrow? So if we commonly if we lost something, we feel sorrow. But the only one thing if we lost that we will brings it brings joy not sorrow. So the Yudhishthira answered anger. Giving it up, we will no longer be subjected to sorrow. If we give up our anger, then we will be live happily. That was the answer given by Yudhishthira. What is that by giving up which me, which man becomes wealthy? If we, if a man wanted to become wealthy, what he has to give up? Yudhishthira answered, desire. So that's why Buddha once told that Asaye Dukkha Ke Karana. Here, if we give up our desire, we will become wealthy. What makes one a real Brahman? Is it birth, good conduct or learning? Answer decisively. So the question asked by the voice to Yudhishthira, who is the real Brahman or what makes one a real Brahman? Whether it is by birth or good conduct or love. If a man born in a Brahmin family, he will become a Brahman. Or the man who has good conduct, he was called as for Brahmin or who was learning more. He was called 
Brahmi. That was the question asked by the voice. The Yudhishthira replied that birth and learning do not make one a Brahman. So, birth and learning they never make a man Brahman. Good conduct alone does. Those who are having good character, good conduct, they are called real Brahman. However, learned person may be, he will not be a Brahman if he is slave to bad habits. Because if a learned person is called as Brahman, but if he was become slave to the black bad habits, he will not become Brahman. What is the greatest wonder in the world? So this was the... For this question, Yudhishthira gave a wonderful answer. What, were, what is the greatest wonder in the world? He prepared the way at the Ashtarakara was the Deen of the Khyatan. Every day, men see creature depart to Yama's support and yet those who remain seek to live forever. This verily is the greatest wonder. So what a beautiful answer Yudhishthira gave. Every day, the human beings seeing that one by one are going to Emma's kingdom. But even though they are feeling, they are living on this earth forever. This was the wonder, that greatest wonder of this on this earth. Thus the Eksha posed many questions and Yudhishthira answered them all. Like this, the invisible voice asked Yudhishthira so many questions and Yudhishthira gave the right answer, perfect answer to the questions. In the end, the Yaksha asked, O King, one of your dead brother can now be revealed. Whom do you want to reveal? He shall come back to life. So, now the invisible was gave a chance to Yudhishthira to that he he gave a chance that who king one of your dead brothers can now be living. Oh Yudhishthira if you want to one of your brother will come back to the life whom do you want to live? In the thought for a moment and then replied. So, Yudhishthara takes some time to answer this question, to reply, and he thought for a moment and replied. May the cloud, cloud complex and lotus eye, broad chested, and long armored nakula. Lying like a fallen ebony tree arise. So, Yudhishthira, he was mainly famous for his dharma. He never give up, he never give up the path of truth for anything. He always, he always in the path of the dharma, in the path of truth. So, he answered that cloud complex senate lotus eye broad chested and long armed nakula so he asked nakula to arise nakula to came back for life instead of bhima instead of arjuna he chosen Nakula. Why? Why Yudhishthira choose Nakula to arise? The Yaksha was pleased at this and asked Yudhishthira. Yaksha was very much pleased about the answer given by Yudhishthira and he also asked, once again he asked Yudhishthira, why did you choose Nakula in preference of Bhima who has the strength of 16,000 elephant? So the Yaksha asked Yudhishthira, why did you choose Nakula? 
Why don't you choose Bhima who has the strength of 16,000 elephants? I have heard that Bhima is the most dear to you. And I also heard that Bhima is very dear to you. And why don't why not Arjuna whose prowess in arms is your protection? And why didn't you choose Arjuna, the great hero? Instead of Bhima and Arjuna, why did you choose Nakula? Tell me, why you choose Nakula rather than either of these two? I a bit too. Niyake Nakula choose Marde and Teli Kid. Idhishtara replied, Idhishtara replied, Ho Yaksha, Kunti and Madri were the two wives of my father. So, Pandava, king, the king Pandava had two wives. One is Kunti and one is Madri. So, I had I, a son of Kunti, am surviving and so the, so it is not completely believed. So, to be fair, I ask that Madri's son Nakula be revealed. So, I am the son of Kunti and I am also now revealed. I am alive. But, so that my mother Kunti will not be depressed. So, Madri, another wife of my father, Madri, her son Nakula, if Nakula was alive, he will be, she will be satisfied, she will be, she will not be completely bereaved. So, to be fair, I ask that Madri's son Nakula be revealed. The Yaksha was pleased with Yudhishthara's impartiality and granted that all his brothers would come back to life. So, hearing the answer of Yudhishthara, the Yaksha was pleased. The Yaksha was very much happy and he made all his brothers come back to the life. So, Dharma Rakshate Rakshita. This was the message sent by Vidhishthara through these answers. It was Yama, the Lord of Death, who had taken the form of the deer and the Yaksha so that the, he might see his son Yudhishthara and test him. He embraced Yudhishthara and blessed him. So the deer they wandered for was none other than Yama and the Yaksha who was the father of Yudhishthara embraced him and blessed him after this. Yama said only a few days remain to complete the stipulated period of your exile in the forest. The thirteenth year will also pass by. No, none of your enemies will be able to discover you. You will successfully fulfill your undertaking and saying this, he disappeared. So, Yama gave assurance that you will fulfill your exile and also your disguise without any problems. Like that, telling this, he was disappeared. Dear students, through this lesson, we have to inculcate so many values by the characters of Pandavas. So, I hope you have all enjoyed this lesson. Thank you very much.